Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Tourists attacked, tied up, suspect held entering police station. The police have charged a man in connection with the robbery of two foreign nationals at a hotel in Kingston on February 24. One of the alleged attackers has been identified as 44-year-old Wayne Campbell. Reports are that tourists met the men on an app and invited them to the hotel. Once there, the men tied up the foreigners and robbed them of their belongings before escaping. A search was launched for the attackers and the alleged getaway car was spotted the next day entering the compound of the halfway tree police station when officers swooped in and accosted Campbell and another man. Investigations are ongoing. Man gone down outside barber shop in Bogwalk. A man was shot and killed outside a barber shop in Bogwalk St. Catherine on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as Samos Gill, otherwise called Rambi, who lived in High Mountain District in Bogwalk. It is reported that about 7.30 p.m., Gill was standing outside the barber shop along Church Road when he was approached by a man who shot him multiple times. His attacker fled the scene. The injured man was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police probing suspected suicide at guest house in Ocharios. The St. Anne police are probing the circumstances surrounding the death of a St. Catherine man at a guest house in Ocharios on Sunday. The deceased has been identified as 46-year-old Tyler Sheldon Logan. His body was discovered hanging from a bathroom window with a piece of cloth tied around the neck shortly before 5 p.m., at Secret's guest house on James Avenue. It is reported that Logan had checked in on Saturday and was due to leave on Sunday. When he did not check out, personnel went to his room where they found his body. The police were notified and the body removed. We're doing some additional work, but right now we're treating it as a case of suspected suicide, Senior Superintendent Dwight Paul reported on Monday. Man reportedly held with $17,000 worth of coins in Westmoreland. 23-year-old Delroy Clark, laborer of Bettleton, Westmoreland, was arrested and charged with chop breaking and larceny following an incident which took place along Birdford Main Road, Darleston in the parish on Tuesday, March 1. Reports from the police are that about 6.30 p.m., a man securely locked up his shop and left for home. Minutes later, he received information that strange sounds were heard inside his business place and sought the assistance of the Darleston police who responded swiftly. Upon their arrival, Clark was seen running from the building with a black knapsack. The police gave chase and apprehended Clark and searched the bag where coins amounting to $17,496 was found inside. The cash was later identified as the shop owner's property which was stolen from his establishment. Subsequent checks reveal that the entry to the building was gained by prying the grill at the front. Clark was charged. His court date is being scheduled. Costly assault. A man was ordered to pay $180,000 in restitution to his former girlfriend when he appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday to answer to assault charges. Court documents reveal that on March 22, 2021, 23-year-old Shalom Garden physically assaulted his then-girlfriend Brittany Brown. He was later charged and assaulted, occasioning bodily harm. It was also revealed in court that he was granted bail, but he was subsequently returned to custody when he threatened to kill the complainant's family. However, in court on Thursday, Garden accused Brown of cheating on him, which resulted in her being assaulted. But Brown told senior parish judge Lorian Montague Cole that they were in a relationship for three years and the reported incident was not the first time he had hit her. Do you want him to compensate you for the injuries? Montague Cole asked Brown. Yes, ma'am, she answered. After much deliberation, it was decided that part of Garden's sentence will require him to pay Brown $180,000 in restitution. The other part of his sentence will be decided when he returns to court on April 21. In response to the sentence, Montague Cole said, I am one judge that the payment of money is not the only solution for abuse cases. When I ask what you want, the money is not the end all. He is still to be sentenced. Money cannot erase what was done, but it can go a long way, the judge continued, speaking about the embarrassment Brown must have suffered. Police Constable O'Shane Thomas 
who has been assisting Brown in the case, told the court that she is afraid of him. Observing the way in which the police officer recorded statements and supported the complainant, Montague co-commended him. He is this officer in terms of taking your statements and so on, she asked Brown. Brown answered very good. Constable O'Shane Thomas, my confidence is renewed in the police Montague Cole praise. Turning to Gordon, she said, your name is Shalom, you know it means peace? Gordon answered in the affirmative and she underscored the importance of being a peaceful citizen. Jackson Heads World Indoor Team Olympic Games 100 meters bronze medalist Sherika Jackson will headline Jamaica's 19th member track and field team at this year's World Athletics Indoor Championships, which will be held in Serbia March 18 to 20. 16 women and 3 men were named by the Jamaica Athletic Administrative Association. Jackson is down to compete in the 60 meter event along with Brianna Williams. Renisha McGregory and Stephanie Ann McPherson will run the 400 meter which Dana Brumfield as the alternate. Natalia Gold is scheduled to complete in the 800 meter. Britannia Anderson and Danielle Williams will run the 60 meter hurdles event. In the field events, Kimberly Williams will take part in the triple jump while Danielle Thomas Dobb is down to compete in the shot put event. Brumfield, McPherson, McGregor, along with Russell, James and Jenkins make up the country's six member pool for the 4 x 400 meter. The three men named are Christopher Taylor, who is down to compete in the 400 meter, Ronald Levy in the 60 meter hurdles, and Nigel Ellis in the 60 meter. Watts is the team manager, while Paul Francis is the head coach. The assistant coaches are Sharon Simpson, Lloyd Clark, Mark Elliott, and Lennox Graham. Government moving to develop Greenwich Town Fishing Village. The government is looking to develop the Greenwich Town Fishing Village in St. Andrew into a major commercial operation, according to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang. Speaking with journalists following a tour of the Greenwich Town Zone of Special Operations those the last Friday, Chang said work being done through Jamaica Social Investment Fund in the communities demonstrate the government's interest in achieving transformative social investment. The men and women here understand fishing and given the right equipment and facilities, the community can become a major fishing center and they have the market here in the corporate era, he said. Noting the attention is being given to the plan as well as support already provided to the fishers, the Deputy Prime Minister pointed out that these emphasize the administration's holistic approach to developing communities. He said the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will play an integral part in the process. All the services that are required to improve the lives of the fisher folks will be provided to create an environment where there can be peace and public safety through the kind of development that we can improve the wealth of the people in the area, he further stated. Noting that Zozos are doing well in many communities, Dr. Chang said it is a model which indicates that when we work together, we can be effective in giving Jamaicans a better quality of life, including safety. The minister underscored that the next step under the Crime Reduction Initiative is to continue equipping the country's security forces with the capacity to ensure that when the communities return to normal policing, wrongdoers do not use themselves as safe haven for criminal activities. He emphasized that with the help of citizens, the police are recovering more illegal guns and the government is committed to ensuring that confidence in the security forces is maintained. Meanwhile, the Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southwest, Dr. Angela Brownberg, said many of the communities in the constituency needed something like this. She added that residents have welcomed the intervention and are pleased with the interactions they are having with the security forces as well as the projects being implemented. Farmers set to benefit from new road in Manchester. Scores of farmers in Northwest Manchester community of Mount Prospect are set to benefit from the recent opening of the Wilson Town Farm Road. Speaking at a recent ceremony for the road opening, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Pernell Charge Jr. said the infrastructure will benefit close to 100 farmers, even as he called for an increase in the budget allocation for a farm road rehabilitation. He added that farmers deserve access to good land space, roads, water, and finances needed to plant crops. I believe 
we directly have to say thank you to farmers. The last two years have been unbelievably challenging. They have been years when most people would have reason to pack up and just say I am done. I am not doing farming, said Charles Jr. I believe the pandemic has proven and exposed the resilience and the strength and the determination of our farmers. I think that it is more than enough justification for me as minister to call on an increase in allocation to the budget for the Farm Road Rehabilitation Program, Adel Charles Jr. Member of Parliament for Manchester Northwestern, Michael Phillips, expressed his delight at the focus on farm roads rehabilitation. This is another happy moment for us in Northwest Manchester, and I want to thank the Minister of Agriculture for at least believing in the farmers, said Phillips. He added that the Huntley and Mount Prospect era in his constituency is pivotal in the production of Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes and carrots. In the meantime, Charles Jr. said his ministry has been preparing to deal with more disasters due to climate change. Coming from a portfolio where I understand climate change more than many, it is going to become more intense, more frequent. Our Rural Agricultural Development Authority Extension officers will have to deal with more and more disasters, but we are prepared, he said. Dairy Board's Pasture Improvement Program provides quality grass for livestock. Farmers island-wide are being encouraged to send in their requests for grass under the Pasture Improvement and Further Bank Development Program. The program aims to sustain adequate nutrient supplies of grass for grazers by cattle by supporting pastures across the island. Chief Executive Officer of the Jamaica's Dairy Development Board, JDDB, Devon Sayers, said the program has been in place over seven years. We provide farmers with access to new varieties of tropical grass that we create to be drought tolerant and they produce better quality fodders for animals meaning they are higher protein grass. We've been going around introducing these new varieties and also assisted farmers in developing their pastures and fodder banks. This effort also forms part of our climate resilient efforts, said Sayers. Livestock farmers who own cattle, goats and sheep can benefit under the program. They are being encouraged to email their requests to the JDDB or submit their requests through JDDB officers assigned to different locations. Last year, we didn't do much as we did before because we were on from good weather and requests are made on a need basis. If the weather is good, there are less requests. Generally, how it works is we provide the seeds, assist with the land preparation activities, and supervise the planting, Sayers explained. Farmers are encouraged to call the JDDB at 876-927-1731-50, send an email to dairyboard at moa.gov.jm or visit the website at www.jddb.gov.jm for more information. For more updates on the work of the JDDB, persons may also visit their Instagram page at jddbofficial. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.